the launch day for Flight 9 is becoming increasingly clear, and it might be sooner than expected. Could it really happen that quickly, and how are preparations coming along? Meanwhile, after a lengthy construction period, the OLM Pad B has officially been moved into place. So what's next for the new launch system? Looking toward the moon, Japan's lunar lander has successfully entered orbit and is now preparing for its highly anticipated landing attempt. Let's dive into all this and more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX continues to make strong progress in preparing for Flight 9, and more information is surfacing that provides increasingly clear estimates for the upcoming launch. At this point, everything is pointing to a launch in the second half of May. Most recently, a new notice has added even more clarity. Unlike earlier alerts, which were mostly speculative or gave broad windows of time, this one outlines a specific date. The United States Coast Guard issued a risk warning related to rocket launch operations near Boca Chica, Texas. Interestingly, it mentions May 19th as the planned launch date, with a time window between 6.30pm and 8.34pm Central. That puts the potential launch just one to two weeks away, a much sooner time frame than most had expected. This notice aligns well with the broader time frame published in the latest local notice to Mariners, which outlines a launch window spanning from May 19th to May 28th. The Coast Guard's warning essentially marks the earliest day of that range, giving us a clearer picture of when liftoff might occur. Adding to this, I came across a Federal Aviation Administration notice, specifically an NOTAM, or Notice to Air Missions, related to Flight 9. Although the date listed differs from the Coast Guard's estimate, the more interesting detail is the updated area map showing risk zones. Notably this time, SpaceX and the FAA have included new warning zones near Cuba and the Bahamas. Some observers have speculated that this reflects a lack of confidence in the mission, as the areas align with regions where debris from a failed vehicle might fall. But from a safety standpoint, this is likely just a precaution. By alerting nearby areas, SpaceX is ensuring maximum safety in the event something goes wrong. Ideally, Starship will pass through these zones without issue, making them irrelevant but it's smart planning to anticipate every possibility. Now, if the launch does indeed take place on the 19th, it would mark a significant milestone. That would beat earlier predictions and signal rapid progress in the Starship development cycle. But the important question remains, is SpaceX truly ready for a 19th of May launch? Based on current progress, the answer appears to be yes. Much of the focus is on S-35, the vehicle set to fly as part of Flight 9. Earlier this month, S-35 underwent two static fire tests at Massey, SpaceX's dedicated engine testing site. However, during one of those tests, a vacuum engine issue was detected. In response, the effective engine was swapped out. At the time of this writing, a new road closure notice has been issued, scheduling transport from the factory to Massey between 12 midnight and 4 in the morning, Central on the 9th clearly intended for S-35. Once S-35 returns to Massey, it will undergo another round of static fire testing similar to the previous procedures. These tests include both single-engine and full six-engine firings. In particular, the six-engine tests may run for up to a full minute to verify engine performance under high stress. Notably, during the burn, the engines appear to vary their thrust levels, like simulating the adjustments needed for complex in-flight maneuvers. The flame trench system at the Massey site played a key role in dispersing the intense heat and pressure during the event. These tests are crucial not just for the sake of the test itself, but because the results directly impact the outcome of the flight. If everything goes well and the newly installed engine performs as expected, it'll signal that the issue has been resolved. Assuming those tests go smoothly, S-35 will likely be transported to the production site immediately afterward, potentially around the 10th or the 11th. There, the flight termination system and payload systems will be installed, a process expected to take several days, possibly wrapping up by the 15th or the 16th. From there, the vehicle would move to the launch pad for final integration and a dress rehearsal, which typically takes another two to three days. Meanwhile, B-14, S-35's launch companion, is already much further along in its preparation. It received final installations some time ago and is essentially ready to move to the launch pad whenever the team gives the go-ahead, likely timed to match S-35's schedule. 
Given this timeline, a May 19th launch is entirely feasible, provided that all systems pass their final tests without delays. Of course, as always, we'll need to wait for SpaceX's official confirmation before locking in the date. So, what do you think? Will it really happen on the 19th? If you agree, type 19 in the comments section down below. If not, leave your predictions and tell us why. Personally, I still have a feeling it might end up being the 20th. While you're here, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all things SpaceX and Starship. Your support means a lot to us, and speaking of support, I want to give a heartfelt thanks to everyone who's helped our channel grow, especially those who've been with us through each milestone. We've now passed 170k subscribers, and with your help, we're aiming to reach 200k before the year is out. That goal is more than just a number. It's a sign of how many people around the world are as excited as we are about the explosion of growth of the space industry, and especially SpaceX's pioneering work with Starship. With each flight test, we get one step closer to a future among the stars. So thank you again, and stay tuned for more updates as Flight 9 draws near. While we continue counting down the days to the highly anticipated Flight 9 launch, another major milestone has just taken place right next door. The orbital launch mount for Pad B has officially made its big move. According to the road closure schedule, on the evening of May 6th, the OLM for Pad B was transported from the Sanchez site to its permanent home at Launch Pad B. This marks a significant development in SpaceX's ongoing efforts to expand its launch infrastructure at Starbase. What makes this moment even more exciting is the closer look we're now getting at the new OLM. Up until now, we've mostly seen it from distant footage or through brief glimpses, but the move has given given us the opportunity to observe it in greater detail. The structure appears more compact and streamlined than its predecessor, featuring a boxy symmetrical design. On both sides, we can see large openings which are likely designed to integrate with the flame trench systems. These openings may allow for venting or access to support infrastructure. At the top of the OLM, each corner is outfitted with a manifold system intended to connect to high volume water deluge lines and the flame trench itself. These systems are essential for suppressing heat and sound during a launch. There's also some scaffolding still in place, likely to support the next stages of integration and outfitting. One fun little detail, the OLM is decorated with a small red heart-shaped sticker that reads Stack Me, echoing a similar label that once appeared on the Pad B launch tower module before it was stacked. It's a small touch that reflects the enthusiasm and culture within the SpaceX team. This movement signals the completion of a long and meticulous construction process. One of the final steps before transport involved rolling out and stacking the support legs at the launch pad site, creating a stable base for the OLM to rest on. Once on site, the structure will be lifted and mounted using two large cranes in coordination with a network of support cables. The dual crane approach should make the process relatively straightforward. Following installation, we can expect a series of tests to begin. These may involve system-by-system -system checks as well as full integration tests. In some cases, SpaceX might use a tank test article for these procedures. But ideally, we may soon see a fully operational booster, possibly B-15, 16, or even 17, placed on Pad B for comprehensive launch readiness testing. If the OLM passes these tests quickly, Pad B could be ready for action sooner than expected, potentially in time to support a ship-catching attempt as early as Flight 10. Although it hasn't been confirmed yet, there are several indications that this new OLM offers many advantages over its older counterpart. Its design appears more compact and efficient, with better integration for support systems like the Flame Trench. However, its most notable strength might be its mobility. The ability to relocate the OLM for refurbishment or upgrades between launches could dramatically improve turnaround times and help maintain a consistent launch cadence. This feature could be essential, especially considering SpaceX's proposal to ramp up to 25 launches per year from Starbase, a pace that would demand resilient, rapidly serviceable infrastructure. With Pad B and its new OLM now nearing operational readiness, SpaceX is setting the stage for a more dynamic and flexible launch schedule. So all eyes are now on the next steps for Pad B. As work continues, we'll be watching closely to see how SpaceX prepares this critical piece of infrastructure for its first real test. Finally, let's turn our attention to the moon, where Japan's resilience lander just marked a major milestone. On May 6th at 4.41 p.m. Eastern, the resilience lander successfully entered lunar orbit after completing a 9-minute main engine burn, its longest maneuver to date. 
The spacecraft's orbital parameters remain undisclosed. Resilience is a companion to the Blue Ghost spacecraft, both of which launched aboard a Falcon 9 rocket in January. While Blue Ghost landed on March 2nd, Resilience took a slower, fuel-efficient route and is now preparing for a landing attempt on June 5th. Its target is Mare Frigoris, a basaltic plain in the moon's northern hemisphere. Takeshi Hakamata, founder and CEO of iSpace, the company behind Resilience, said, We are extremely pleased that the Resilience lander successfully reached lunar orbit as planned. We will continue careful operations to ensure a successful landing. Resilience carries five science and technology payloads, including a small rover named Tenacious, built by iSpace's Luxembourg branch. The rover will collect lunar soil under a NASA contract and also carries an artistic payload called Moonhouse, a miniature installation by artist Mikhail Genberg. This is iSpace's second lunar mission. The first attempt ended in a crash in April of 2023 due to a software error. Hakamata noted that the team has applied lessons from that mission. We've successfully completed maneuvers so far by leveraging operational experience from Mission 1. Japan is pushing hard for lunar progress, especially after issues with its slim lander earlier this year. Looking ahead, iSpace's U.S. branch is building a lander for a NASA CLPS mission set to launch in 2026. A third Japan-built lander is planned for 2027. But before that future takes shape, all eyes are on resilience and its upcoming landing. Let's see if Japan can make history on the moon. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.